Oh oh. Kylan hat mir noch ein Hardware-Video geschickt, Chat. The best FF der, der Titel dazu heißt Best Direct Drive Beginner Bundle for PC and Console. FB and feedback that I've got so far out of this wheelbase. So, so nice. The entry into the world of Direct Drive wheelbases is getting more and more affordable. At this year's Gamescom and Sim Racing Expo, Chinese manufacturer PXN caught our attention. Ah! A wide range of Sim Racing. Davon haben wir letztens schon mal äh, was gesehen von der äh, PXN. Ich habe den Untertitel vergessen, aber jetzt ist er an. Okay. Aber cool, dass jetzt mal was da ist. Mal sehen. Product in the pipeline, which should become more accessible to the American and European markets in the future. Uh, from simple pedals and a free Newton meter entry level wheels to complete rigs, accessories, shifters, load cell pedals and the 16 Newton meter V15 direct drive, which is currently in the works. Today we take a closer look at one of the DD entry level bundles, the 6 Newton meter V12 Lite with the uh, PDHM pedals, which should be of particular interest to some due to its multi-platform usability. Oh, das ist wirklich cool. Das ist vor allen Dingen auch endlich mal ein Anbieter, der auf Konsole geht, weil wir haben, wir haben ehrlich gesagt keinen großen mehr. Also Thrustmaster ist noch da, Logitech logischerweise. Na, aber ich meine jetzt so für den DD mal gibt es halt Uh, gibt es halt nur uh, Fanatec und da hat Fanatec keine, keine Konkurrenz aktuell, weil glaube ich niemand die Lizenzen bezahlen möchte, weil du das ja jedes Mal lizenzieren musst, dass eine Wheelbase oder ein, ein Hersteller uh, Produkte dafür herstellen darf. Das ist super interessant. Welcome back to Overtake. I'm Michel and let's get started. I will take a quick look at the package contents, see exactly what bundles PXN is competing against in terms of price and how convincing the quality impression is. Then okay. we'll mount this whole thing on my track racer rig and do some playtesting to see how well the wheelbase performs in terms of compatibility, also in the on the PS5 and the driving feel. So let's unpack the boxes. The whole set here costs around 550 euros or US. Okay. Okay. Dollars, which puts it up against the 5 Newton meter Fanatec CS LDD bundle and the Moza R5 5.5 Newton meter bundle. The first obvious advantage is the third pedal, uh, which we don't get with the CSL pedals and the Moza SRP Lite pedals. At the time of recording, the PXN V12 bundle is unfortunately not available on Amazon. The wheel itself is called WDS and it seems to be very reasonable for the price. In addition to the 12 buttons, There are even two encoders, a joystick and a dual shift pedals, the already mentioned e Oh, die klingen gut. Äh, uh, hui hui hui. S-Wheel from the Moza R5 bundle has none of the last three mentioned. Aha, wir sind wieder im selben Quick Release uh, unterwegs wie SimMagic und Moza, das ist schon mal gut. Uh, the CSL standard wheel from Fanatec can only keep up with the joystick. Yeah, the general appearance of the wheel is okay for the price. Um, the flat bottom wheel looks solid and even has an RGB shift light here. The 300 mm diameter is also a good sweet spot for a wheel like this. It weighs just ja 1.5 ja. kilograms äh, or 3.2 pounds. The ja. red stitching is ich weiß nicht genau, wie der heißt, aber ist der gleiche. Cool, but could be a bit more precise and better stitched in some places. The synthetic leather material here is on the harder side. Could be a bit softer if you ask me. But on the positive, the um, upper shifters are even magnetic. And you have two additional ones here. And the lower shifters give you yeah, the option of two additional button assignments, basically. I could imagine um, the handbrake function here, maybe DRS or something like that. Uh, we can also see uh, this stylish aluminum quick release, uh, which is mechanically <laughs> similar <laughs> to the Moza and Simmagic wheels. Oh. Buttons and encoders don't have much resistance, feel a bit wobbly, but they do their job. The wheelbase weighs just under five kilograms or 10.8 pounds and has four fixed mounting holes on the bottom. Uh, so you will need a top mount wheel deck for your rig. There's also a bracket kit in case you want to attach this whole wheelbase to your desk. Even though the base is not super strong in terms of uh, torque, uh, there is still a kill switch connection. And by the way, this little converter here, just uh, plug it into the USB port, will allow us to use it with PlayStation 5 as well, which we will also test. Okay, das ist cool. 
adapter. The included pedals are rather basic, but they offer a high degree of adjustability. Similar to the aforementioned bundles from Fanatec at Moza, uh, we have this transfer plate on which we can position our pedals appropriately. And the angle and height of the uh, individual elements can also be adjusted slightly. Like I said, you have an option of the third pedal and the clutch pedal that you can also add to the plate, but you don't have to. Brake can also be adjusted to your liking. If you, for example, use um, harder springs or elastomers, they are user manual. This is very similar to, to Mosa, the system. It's also in English for each part, the wheel, wheelbase and the pedals. I felt like... Yeah, the descriptions and illustrations could be a bit more precise. But as there are not so many alien keys, screws and nuts and everything and bolts, um, this should be yeah, a rather smooth construction. So let's quickly get everything together and attach to the rig. Then we'll take a look at the software and get right to the track. So then let's quickly assemble the pedals. I will not use the clutch because I think for our test today it's not really needed. So I put it to the side. All right, the pedals are on. I had to experiment just a little bit and uh, there was only one exact right option to fit all the screws here without any yeah, drilling or something. Quick and easy, really, really good. The wheel is on. What I can tell immediately is that the fans are even in idle mode. They are quite loud, I have to say, or they are present at least. Anyways, that's the website epxn.com and we can get support here, tools, I guess. Yeah, the firmware's PXN Racing. Yeah, one thing to mention as well here, all of the apps that we are installing from PXN, they are not trusted by Windows. Yeah, so let's do all the updates, I guess that's... Uh, ja, du, also SimRacer kennt das. Uh Mehr Details trotzdem ausführen. Worth doing. All right. Didn't expect that. But there's actually a USB port here. Let's see how that will work. 90 to 1600 degrees of rotation. I'll keep it um, as intended for now. Also the center force is here. The mechanical dampening force. Road sensation perception. Das All right. Let's leave it like also that for now and see how it feels in game. Um, es scheint sehr durchdacht zu sein, dass man äh, Effekte rein und raus drehen kann. Das ist sehr gut. Also the pedal settings here, and it's already detected. There's just a weird behavior that the clutch is loading up when I keep the accelerator pressed. Um, that's weird. Brake is working as well. Yeah, they are all very linear. Oh, substitution key. Can we do this? The lower left pedal is now the clutch. Okay, interesting. Why doesn't it show anything then? It still does this weird thing of the clutch loading up when pressing the accelerator. Three languages available for this app, uh, English, Japanese and Chinese. So in case you watch from Japan, yeah, please let us know in the comments. And if you're not from Japan and watching anyways and enjoy our content, make sure to subscribe, hit the bell and like the video. Thank you so much. So we've got ACC running. All buttons are working just perfectly fine. Uh, no issues at all. Shift light is not working. And uh, yeah, also this little uh, joystick here is uh, working. So I've got all the controls here. I experimented a bit with the dynamic dampening and road effects and I felt like this is the setting that felt uh, the best so far. All right, some good road effects here already. You feel the bumps while exiting the pits. Okay, ACC is working quite well, but that was to be expected as this was also their demo title when they were in the exhibitions. Yeah, some smooth curb effects here as well. But yeah, you can definitely get a feeling for what the car does. And it's also fun. Yeah, how about the pedals? Yeah, when you are used to an Arzatec Forte, this brake feels quite uh, soft. Alles fühlt sich, glaube ich, soft an gegen Asetec Pedale. For sure. Yes. Test long travel. This would help with like driving street cars, for example. If you are not into the GT stuff, it's way better. But also this way, at least with the long travel, you can really do like the measurement and dose the the force you apply to the brake. So it does work. I can steer. I feel the car. 
I have a good amount of road effects. Schaltet der mit dem Ringfinger? Das ist ja super interessant. Habe ich da noch nie gesehen. And I also, I'm also getting used to the pedals and the braking. So then let's give it a go in iRacing. Tatsächlich. Forces are just a tad stronger than in ACC. I've got a much better feeling for also the rear wheels when they step out. But still, like steering is a little bit numb in the center. Quite some. Das haben die Wheelbases leider alle in dieser Preisregion, dass sie in der Mitte einfach tot sind. Warum auch immer, ich weiß es nicht, aber die sind meistens in der Mitte sind die tot. Good road effects here, especially on Road America, on the straight, you have a few bumps and bits here and there. The car is working with me. Da ist nix. Da ist in der Mitte ist meistens nix. Du gehst rum und dann hast du so im ersten Viertel beim, beim Lenken hast du nix und dann kickt, kickt das erst rein. Das ist ganz eigenartig. Davon hatte ich jetzt mittlerweile schon echt einige Wheelbases da. Gerade, also mein Liebling, deswegen fahre ich auch immer sehr viel, äh, sehr viel ähm, Spar, um das zu testen, weil, äh, weil das super wichtig ist, dass du halt in dem Bereich trotzdem was fühlst. Ne? Wenn du bei Spar zum Beispiel fährst du links rum und dann rechts wieder hoch und du hast immer so ein Stück, wo nichts ist. But this is enjoyable. I feel like I can get up to speed quite quickly. Biggest issue is uh, pretty much the brake and the pedal set that I'm not used to right now. But honestly, this test drive here in iRacing gave me a much more positive feel. Just the front tires and during steering, it's, uh, it's a bit numb, but otherwise, good feel for the car, for the road. And now I'm really curious. All right, we're testing Dirt Rally 2.0, so we... We uh, also use the mode setting, application mode. Um, I don't think that this will enable us to have like um, dynamic RGB shift LEDs. Um, it's, it's still like completely green and it's just constantly lighted up. So yeah, this won't change anything in terms of uh, shift Ooh, lighting. I'm not too sure how to change that. So these are my vibration and force feedback settings right now. I bumped everything up quite a little bit, uh, reduced the center force a bit. As I mentioned earlier, I use the lower shift pedal here on the right side as a handbrake. Uh, so this works also as an axis that you can calibrate. And in order to get the force feedback running here in Dirt Rally 2.0, you have to put in some extra work. So you basically download a file from the PXN website, um, the replacement for the device input XML. And uh, yeah, this adds basically the okay. ID of the device to this list. And then it works also properly with force feedback. So let's get the stage started. All right, there's another hairpin. Let's try. Oh, this works actually pretty well. Oh, Hammerstein. With the lower shift pedal used as a handbrake. It's one of the most dangerous corners here on the stage. Yeah, it works pretty well in case you can't uh, fit a handbrake to your place where you're racing. It's a good compromise. Okay, let's try a gravel stage to see if there's even more road effects and better feedback. Uh, as expected, as general, uh, gravel has a bit more detail and in general feels nicer in Dirt Rally 2.0. This also feels better. Here also over the jumps you feel something happening there definitely in the force feedback. Yeah, it works a good amount of force into my arms, so as I'm used uh, to stronger wheels still, I would say this one does the job of um, letting you know what, what's happening. Yeah, that's good fun. Whoop, into the tree. Yeah, I feel like there could be a little bit of more fine detail in terms of uh, yeah, stone chips and elevation changes. But the overall force and feeling for the car is definitely there. So I wonder what will be the difference uh, to EA Sports WRC with this wheel. All right, so the principle with the XML magic is basically the same as with Dirt Rally 2.0. Just add um, the device code to your device defines XML. Five, oh, there's force feedback. So Dirt Rally 2.0 did not have this uh, rattling and shaking up on starting the stage. Oh, nice, it works. And there's much more happening. Yeah, the forces could be stronger for my taste, so I would definitely 
prefer a stronger wheelbase. That is, of course, also more expensive in that case, but yeah, PXN will also have the V12 without the light to it. It has 10 Newton meter, and they are, like I said, working on the V15. That is even more stronger. And uh, yeah, if it's also then reliable and endurance. Kommen wir noch zum PlayStation wahrscheinlich, oder? Das würde mich mal interessieren. I think this is a very solid feel and wheelbase also for rallying. Unpopular opinion, but I feel like in this scenario, testing back to back, the gravel feel in WRC is way better than in Dirt Rally 2.0. So it's time for the test with PlayStation 5 and Gran Turismo 7. I attached this little converter to the USB slot here. Okay. And I had to do some adjustments with the pedals. You maybe remember the little quirk we had in the software where Pressing the accelerator also activated the clutch. So whenever I accelerated, it also pressed the clutch and my car went into neutral. So as a fix, and this is a bit unfortunate, I had to attach also the clutch pedal. Let's just get into a little ah, race okay. with Sophie here in Tsukuba. How does the steering angle look like? Very good. And this is the first time actually our RGB shift light is working. So on the PC titles, it didn't. Now it does something. When I go into the ref limiter, it even starts... Uh, give it a second, yeah, it starts blinking. Yeah, you got to feel understeer as well as the road. I would even say it's a really good wheel for Gran Turismo at this point, because it just drives very well. If you go higher with the max force, um, it starts to get a bit annoying when you just drive. Habt ihr das euch schon mal aufgefallen? Also bei seinem, bei seinem Fahrstil, und das ist keine Kritik, also das will ich gar nicht kritisieren, er schaltet mit dem Ringfinger und beim Lenken, sobald er ab einem gewissen Winkel drüber ist, nimmt er seinen Daumen jedes Mal raus. Ich finde das total interessant, wie, wie Leute, äh, wie Leute äh, fahren, also was sie alles währenddessen sie, währenddessen sie drinnen sitzen, an ihrem Lenkrad machen. Das ist super interessant. On a straight, so for example here in Tsukuba. Jetzt lese ich ihn gleich wieder rein, denke ich. The wheel ja, uh, rattling itself loose when you don't keep it in your hands. This would get even stronger, and, and now I have it in a in a way that it's uh, balanced. Let's That's total interesting. Here with Assetto Corsa. Oh, I think uh, tourist variant might be the wrong one. Yeah, front wheel drive, but I had a very good feeling out of the box when the front tires were spinning. The wheel told me that in a very very smooth and good way. From the tested title so far, this is by far the best FFB and feedback that I've got so far out of this wheelbase. So, so nice. Yeah, as you can also see, there's no visible or noticeable delay here, input delay. Once you have made settings and adjustments or modified the corresponding X and L files as with Dirt Ready 2.0 or WRC, the wheel makes a very solid impression. However, the user experience needs to be much more pleasant and easier, especially for beginners. This is especially true for the software. Unsigned Windows drivers, inadequate instructions, missing translations and bugs such as with the pedal sometimes significant... Willkommen bei Mosa, da ist das auch so. Also zumindest bei mir. Es gibt Leute, die sagen mir, dass das bei denen nicht passiert, aber bei mir ist auch jedes Mal, wenn ich einen Moimosa treiber installieren möchte, es steht das in asiatischen Schriften. Please spoil the fun. The good news is that the problems should be solvable in the short term. You should also be aware that service and warranty issues can be difficult with a Chinese import, but even some long established manufacturers have their problems. At first glance, however, the wheel looks well made and like a serious attempt to attack the direct drive oh. market. And that's always good for us, the customers. If you want to see more Stimmt. hardware, I recommend this playlist. Thanks for watching. Have a great week. Das sieht wirklich interessant aus, also gerade für Konsolenmenschen. Wobei man sagen muss, für 550 Euro ist das leider an der Stelle wieder keine Konkurrenz. Also es ist, es ist derselbe Preis wie... Mosa und konkurriert nicht mit dem Einsteigerbundle von Fanatec. Also da kommt keiner ran, da wird keiner, also haben wir ja gestern kurz schon mal äh, drüber gesprochen, ne? an die CSLDD, an das Bundle kommt keiner für den Einstieg, weil 300, glaube ich, 99 bei aktuellem Preis am 28.11.2023, keine Chance. Aber es sieht schön aus, muss man sagen. Es sieht wirklich äh, prima aus. Äh, von der Verarbeitung her sah es jetzt auch nicht so kacke aus, bis auf so die Kleinigkeiten, die er gezeigt hatte mit den ähm, äh, mit dem mit, den, mit der Naht. Schon cool. Bin mal gespannt, was da noch kommt. Also, oder ob da noch was kommt, so in die Richtung.